concept of Sunnah in the Muatta of Malik ibn Anas by Muhammad Yusuf Quraya, McGill University, 1969. Malik held that two partners in business had not to pay the zakah, that is a, a yearly charity paid uh, for certain commodities, until each partner reaches the limit on which zakah is essential. Against this doctrine of Malik, the authorities in Medina, like Umar ibn al-Khattab, Umar ibn al-Aziz, held that they had to pay zakah. Another great scholar of Medina, Yahya ibn Sa'id, held the same opinion. Here Malik has opposed Umar ibn al-Khattab and Umar ibn al-Aziz, the most reliable authorities amongst the companions and among the successors respectively. He has also opposed Yahya ibn Sa'id, one of the most respected authorities among his teachers. At the end of his letter, Laith says, there are many other issues which are controversial, but I, I can leave them for the time being. This letter was also written reply, in reply to a letter sent by Malik to Laith ibn Sa'ad, throws much light on the idea of consensus with Malik. Malik in his letter has advised Laith when Laith formulated and expressed his legal opinion not to oppose the practice of Medina with us and the practice of our town. In his reply, Laith has pointed out to Malik that what he had claimed as the agreement or practice of the people of Medina, in fact, was his own opinion. And instead of agreement or consensus or the general practice of people on the issues, in reality there existed difference and disagreement, citing many examples and quoting the leading authorities of Medina. Laith showed Malik that he differed widely with all of them and not infrequently held solitary opinions without any support from the Medinese scholars and authorities. From the name cited by Laith in his letter, it appears that Malik had differences on almost all issues, either with one authority or the other. These authorities are not other than Umar ibn Khattab, Uthman ibn Affan, Sayyid ibn Thabit, among the companions, and Umar ibn Abdulaziz, Sa'id ibn Musayyib ibn Shihab, Rabia ibn Abdurrahman, Qabisa ibn Zuwayb, and Abu Salama ibn Abdul Rahman ibn Auf, Abu Bakr ibn Abdurrahman ibn Harith ibn Hisham, Abdul Malik ibn Marwan, Abu Bakr ibn Muhammad ibn Hazm, Yahya ibn Sa'id, and many other successors and successors of successors. We can conclude from what has been said so far that the idea of consensus described by Malik in the Muatta does not include the whole Muslim community in Medina. Further, though apparently the terminology used by Malik to express the idea of consensus suggests that all the scholars of Medina agreed on the points where Malik had claimed consensus. Yet, in fact, the consensus of Malik does not mean the agreement of all the scholars in Medina. We have also examined the evidence to see whether there was a particular group of scholars in Medina on whose agreement on a particular issue Malik declared consensus in Medina. The evidence has shown that mostly, wherever Malik claims consensus, a difference between the leading scholars in Medina exists. What the evidence has shown is that Malik gives preference to some opinions of the Medinese scholars over the others and declares consensus respecting it. Expressions like Al-Amr al-Mujtama' alayhi indana do not mean that all the scholars in Medina, or even a particular group of them, agree on the issues where such terms are applied. From the letter of Laith ibn Sa'ad and from the writings of Abu Yusuf, al-Shaybani, al-Shafi'i and the Rabi'i, we have shown in detail that Malik differed with his own authorities, agreeing with some of them and disagreeing at the same time with others. We have cited many examples from the Muatta to show that Malik gives a different opinion of the scholars in Medina, and at the end of the issue he declares al-Amr mujtama alayhi indana, there are some places in the motto where Malik has simply mentioned the term and not given the contrary opinions of the scholars. We have verified some of these places in the writings of the contemporaries, i.e. Laith ibn Sa'ad, Shafi'i, Arabi, etc. And we also find many great scholars of Medina held a different opinion. Thus, with the help of internal and external evidence, we conclude that the idea of consensus in the motto, in fact, was the personal choice of opinion of some of the scholars of Medina. We have also shown that the term Andana is very ambiguous and sometimes it means Andi. And this meaning of the term may extend it even to the term Al Amr al Mujtami alayhi Andana. On such occasions, as Shafi has correctly pointed out, you call your opinion consensus. Shah Wali Allah says that on, an occasion, on occasions in the Muatta, Malik has used the word Andana actually where there was not the consensus of the people of Medina, rather, it was the choice of some of his teachers or even his own personal choice. This attitude of Malik towards consensus is confirmed by later Maliki scholars. Malik has applied the term al-Amr al-Mujtami alayhi ambiguously both to the matters under practice in Medina and to theoretical issues. Al-Qarafi would not accept this indiscriminate use of the term. Rather, he would accept the term consensus reported by Malik on the matters 
which were under practice of the whole community of Medina, like the call for prayer, he would not accept the consensus of Malik, which was based on the opinion of Malik on the points which were not in practice. Fadi Iyad holds the same opinion. He says what has been reported as being the practice of Medina, like the call for prayer and the call to follow the Imam, and not to express Bismillah in the prayer. The general form of the Prophet's prayer, the number of its raqah and prostrations and the like would constitute consensus which would be binding. Shafi'i would also accept the consensus of Malik if it is related to the essentials of Islam because a Shafi'i holds that consensus is not possible except on the essentials of Islam. The result of these discussions of a Shafi'i and of the Maliki scholars is that they have differentiated between the consensus in Malik on essentials and the consensus on the points of detail and held that the consensus on the essentials or on the matters which were under common practice would be accepted as genuine and valid legal argument, while the consensus on points of detail would not be accepted as such. This differentiation between the consensus on the essentials and on points of detail is not found in the Muatta. Malik has not differentiated between the two and has applied the term Al-Amr al-Mujtama' alayhi indana, mostly on points of detail. It may be very interesting to note that Malik has used this term almost extensively in the chapters of Mu'amalat, dealings and transactions, and never in the chapters of Ibadat, uh, that's matters pertaining to ritual worship, except twice in Kitab al-Zakah, thus, this is underlined, thus, what was a rule with Malik became an exception with the Malik's pupils, and what was an exception with Malik became a rule with his followers. This is very important. Thus, what was a rule with Malik became an exception with Malik's pupils, and what was an exception with Malik became a rule with his followers. Malik has recorded the practice on worship prevalent in Medina, as he found with his sporadic comments. But in his chapters concerning social dealings and transactions, Malik goes on writing on the subject giving his own opinions and his choice of the opinions of others. He quotes the Prophet and other subsequent authorities sporadically. This change of emphasis from report to opinion and judgment shows that Malik's main concern was with social dealings. Here, he exercises his independent opinion and differs and agrees with authorities according to his own view of Islam. Stay tuned for many more parts.